So it's my pleasure today to introduce how Trust in Soft Analyzer puts formal methods at the fingertips of C, C++ developers that they can use this uh, formal method in a software development life cycle. So without any delay, let's jump into the agenda of the day. Um, I'm going to introduce very briefly my company, Trust Insult, and then we will focus on a very specific issue of C, C++ programming language, and then how to solve it, and it will be, uh, I think, as a good introduction for abstract interpretation, that is one of formal methods we uh, use at Trust Insult. And uh, that will lead us to uh, the introduction of the main features of Trust Insult Analyzer. I will not have enough time to introduce all features of the analyzer so i'm going to focus on the main one so if you want to discuss uh, other advanced features we have we can organize another face-to-face -face meeting with you and of course at the end of this presentation i will leave time leave time to q a session question and answer a few words about uh, my company. So Trust Insoft is a French uh, company based in Paris. We have subsidiary in the uh, United States and in Asia. Uh, the underlying technology of Trust Insoft product, uh, the Trust Insoft Analyzer, was developed in a research center, a French research center, uh, by Trust Insoft funders. So it was an applied research project funded by Airbus and Arriva. And uh, this project aims to reduce uh, the uh, aimed to reduce the workload of the verification of the software component with the highest level of requirements for safety and security uh, certification, of course. So uh, the tool was developed. Uh, it was almost 20 years ago, and the team, our founders, has demonstrated the benefits of exhaustive and static analyzer based on formal method. They were able to cope with the challenge of verifying increasingly complex software and to reduce the cost of the verification, verification step. Uh, the results of this pioneering work is the foundation of Trust in Soft. And now we are working with uh, many and various customers from various areas like semiconductors, IoT, telecom, automotive, and other critical uh, industries uh, like defense and space. So let's back. Let's, let's go to uh, the uh, beginning and the origin of the works of, of this research project. So you have experience, I think you know C, C++, and C, C++ remain dominant language for embedded software, controlling everything, for example, from engine management to advanced driver assistance system. However, this dominance comes with a significant challenge ensuring both safety and cyber security nowadays uh, with this uh, incredibly complex system. But uh, software written in C, C++, you know, can crash, exhibit unexpected behavior uh, or miss critical action entirely. They can be exacerbated by undetermined code flow where the program's next step is unpredictable. The root cause of, of all this uh, undefined behavior is uh, an issue and it's mentioned in the uh, standard as undefined behavior. So there is a specific annex in the standard defining undefined behaviors because C and C++ are memory and safe language. So you can uh, clearly uh, have memory safety issue in a C, C++ language. You can call them runtime errors and they know they, know, they are known as a buffer overflow, use after free, null pointer deferencing, or integer overflow, division by zero. They are really difficult to detect. It's very tricky to detect them, uh, and they have expensive consequences. Uh, it's uh, very costly. Uh, they, they have an impact on safety, and they have an impact on cyber security. It's, it means that uh, an attacker can use a buffer overflow or a memory safety issue to penetrate your software and to execute arbitrary code. So if you are not convinced by uh, this kind of effect, we have a few examples on this slide uh, that show uh, that uh, there is um, many, many various consequences and expensive consequences of undefined behavior. So it's an example, a short sample of, uh, of uh, example. What we can see is that uh, if we look at the Mitre, 
uh, Mitre, it's a cyber security uh, organization. Uh, they publish uh, every year uh, the CWE Top 25. So uh, we have analyzed the CWE Top 25 for the last year. And we have noticed that uh, undefined behavior represents almost 70% of the vulnerabilities for embedded software. And in the detail, buffer overflow represents almost 50% of the vulnerabilities. And the buffer overflow is the first one uh, which is used by attackers to penetrate a, a software. So that's, uh, that's important to notice. From safety uh, perspective, uh, we can base our analysis on the Toyota Info Technology Center test suite. It was developed by Toyota when they encountered uh, a big uh, case in US with a braking system, uh, which didn't break uh, at the end. And they develop this uh, test suite to uh, assess uh, software development, a C++ uh, software. And in this test suite, we can notice that undefined behavior uh, represents almost around, let's say, around 80% of all safety test cases. So as you can see, um, undefined behavior, or what you can call memory safety issue or runtime error, uh, are a main concern uh, for uh, software developer or for software publisher. Just two examples to, to zoom on, uh, for example, Ariane. Ariane was destroyed, it was in June 1986, after 40 seconds of flight because an error occurred when a 64-byte floating point number was converted into a six-bit integer and generated an integer overflow and uh, the, the rocket was uh, destroyed. Um, and another example, maybe uh, closer to, to us in time, uh, is the uh, temporary mobile subscriber identify uh, module uh, in automotive car. Um, they detect a buffer overflow. It was uh, it does not jeopardize the safety of the car, but uh, uh, a cyber attacker can uh, penetrate the infotainment system. It was decided to switch off uh, the unit simply. Uh, they didn't provide quickly a fix. So as you can see. Uh, if you detect a uh, memory safety issue in post-production, it could be really, really expensive for your company. Why, why there is uh, this kind of memory safety issue after uh, the release of the software? Let's say today, many of developers use what we can call uh, typical analysis. Typical analysis used pattern matching, heuristic, to, to, to scan your uh, source code file. Then in this case, it's not an exhaustive analysis. They are going to miss uh, execution path. Uh, so they are going to miss uh, bugs in your uh, software. And moreover, they generated this kind of tools, generates, uh, generate um, a number of false alarms because they are not uh, enough accurate when they do the analysis due to the, the pattern matching and the heuristics they used. So uh, when you are overwhelmed with a number of alarms, you don't know if it's a false alarm or the right alarm. You have to analyze everything. Uh, sometimes uh, the developer let it uh, behind him because he has no time to do it. And in this way, uh, the developer creates, uh, creates a technical debt you have to process later. So maybe in this uh, long list of alarms, there is a true alarm you should have uh, correct and you don't see them, you don't see it because you didn't analyze uh, every alert. So what can we do? So the, we can use what we call an exhaustive and a generalized analysis. In this case, uh, we are going to cover all execution paths of uh, the software and we, are, we will be able to uh, generalize all possible behavior, meaning that we are able to generalize all possible value of variables, entry points, uh, parameter of an entry points, for example. Then in this case, we ensure an exhaustive uh, detection of bugs across all code paths and 
by optimizing uh, the methods, of, uh, this method, we reduce the number of alarms, so we reduce the number of false alarms. That means that the uh, developer will not be uh, overwhelmed by a ton of alarms. And this method can provide and will provide a mathematical proof of properties on the software. So you will have a uh, mathematical uh, proof uh, of uh, the level of safety, uh, reliability, robustness, or security of your software. And the perfect candidate to do that is the abstract interpretation. Uh, the abstract interpretation is a software analysis technique that analyzes the possible values of variable at any stage of the computation. So it creates a simplified model uh, using mathematics, of course, and to find all potential problems in your software. And this is a good candidate to do that. So that is where the, the expertise of Trusty Soft is. We used formal method and especially abstract interpretation. And we have created a hybrid code analyzer combining advanced techniques of static and dynamic uh, techniques. Uh, so we are combining static and dynamic analysis with formal methods. At the end, uh, you will get a mathematical guarantee of properties of new software. I will detail these properties in the next slide. Just to say that we have been mentioned by the NIST in a report to the White House. They used our tool uh, to prove the absence of buffer overflow, integer overflow, or use after free in a famous library, an open SSL library called uh, Polar SSL. Uh, in the past, I think the new name is Arm Embed, and, and they were uh, able to say this library is reliable, you can use it, uh, and it's widely used uh, right now. So let's dive a bit into uh, the main feature of Strati stuff, why we are unique. Um, first of all, I remind you that we are focusing on C, C++ language. Uh, we are focusing on uh, what we call undefined behavior or memory safety issues, that is uh, really expensive bugs. Um, and we use, as I said, abstract interpretation. But we use an abstract uh, soundness, a sound abstract interpretation, meaning that we are not going to miss any bug uh, in your uh, software. So we use C, C++ source code file. We analyze, so the trust in software analyzer analyzes C, C++ source code file and is going to go everywhere in all execution paths. Uh, we have worked a lot to optimize uh, this analysis to reduce the number of false positives. So you will have very few false positive, positive even zero false alarms, meaning that uh, depending of the mode uh, you are going to use our analyzer, you can generate zero false alarms. So by combining, by combining all these uh, characteristics, uh, at the end of the analysis, you will have a mathematical proof of the absence of undefined behaviors. So no memory safety issue, no buffer overflow, integer after, use after free, or division by zero, for example. But it's not only the, um, this one proof you will have. You will have the proof of the control flow and the data flow integrity. That is the paramount for cybersecurity and even for safety. If you are familiar with the ISO 26262 standard, it is mentioned in the standard that you should have no uh, hidden control flow and no hidden data flow. So this integrity of control flow and data flow is proven by, by our analyzer. Another one, another proof, is the proof of the determinism. The analyzer will prove that for one input, you will have one output and only one. So your software will be determinist. Uh, that is really important in safety, but I think also in cybersecurity. This is another unique proof on the market we can provide to our user. By the way, we have another uh, very unique feature on the market, what we can call hardware awareness. It's a key advantage for uh, embedded software. It is the ability to represent the target uh, hardware with the analysis that eliminates the need of real hardware or emulator. So in this case, uh, the developer uh, is, uh, is enabled to define uh, the hardware architecture 
uh, CPU type, word size, NDSness, padding, and even low memory mapping. So the use of concrete and real address of the hardware. So you are going to do, so the developer uh, is going to do the analysis uh, with the characteristic of the final hardware, not based on the host hardware. So that's quite important because you are here going to be more representative and you are going to generate less false alarms because you know how it works on the hardware. Another uh, key features, uh, a key differentiator for uh, other uh, techniques on the market, um, you can easily control the uh, exhaustivity. So you can be exhaustive, so you can cover all possible input value uh, in one run, meaning that when you have identified a non-tree point, you can uh, say that I, I want to analyze my program through this non-tree point, and you can ask to the analyzer to uh, use all possible input values for uh, this entry point. Or you can control the approximation, you can, you can define the range of possible value you want to analyze because you know the functional domain of the entry point and it's not needed to cover all possible value, but just the functional domain for the uh, test vector, the input uh, test vector. So you have full control of what the analyzer will do and you can tune as well uh, the uh, configuration of the analyzer. By the way, as I said, uh, we uh, combine other dynamic uh, techniques to analyze your software. So we provide you uh, information about the structural code coverage. Uh, also, uh, in other words, uh, you will know what is reachable and what is not reachable in your source code file. Uh, up to you, uh, up to the developer to decide if it's a dead code or not, but the information is available and you know what has been analyzed. And to analyze very carefully uh, what uh, is the root cause uh, of the uh, runtime errors, we have developed a specific graphical user interface because as you have understood, we generate a lot of call stacks because we are able to generate billion of billion of input values to, uh, to analyze your software. So it's uh, uh, 100 and 100 of call stacks. And you are able to analyze uh, the root cause and to uh, scan or to explore all call stacks in this graphical user interface. Maybe you can say it's a, a super debugger, uh, but it's very easy to find the root cause because all information uh, are accessible in the graphical user interface, even the uh, value of variables. Uh, and pointer to pointer to pointer to function, you have access to everything thanks to the abstract interpretation. So this is uh, technical features. Uh, I have an example of how we have used uh, our tool in an industrial uh, process. Uh, this example uh, comes from uh, automotive industry. Uh, in this case, we use the AutoZAR uh, standard. AutoZAR is the Automotive Open System Architecture. Uh, that is great in the standard, that is a standardized uh, standard for the automotive, and you can use a tool, uh, Autoza authoring tool, to design your architecture and to generate an XML file, a standardized XML file called RXML, where, uh, where you can find uh, the profile of the entry point, so the name of the entry point and the parameters on the entry point, and the range of the input values uh, in other ways, the functional domain of the input value, so it's a range of values, uh, you uh, need to uh, verify uh, the correct behavior of the software, or this, this is the dom functional domain. We have developed what we can call a connector to uh, Autosar, so this connector is able to take it as an input the XML file and to generate what we call the analysis harness, so everything needed to scan uh, the C uh, files of the AutoZAR uh, software component. Based on these two uh, elements, these two artifacts, the analyzer will analyze uh, the source code file. It, in this case, uh, you control the approximation of the, test, uh, of the input test vector because it is defined in the RXML file. 
and then we generate a report. Remember that uh, a trust of analyzer is qualified ISO 262, so you can use our evidences in your ISO 262 certification process. It's fully uh, automatic, so nothing to do. Uh, you can integrate, uh, and it has been integrated in a CI, so you can use your control, your continuous uh, integration system to run it uh, every night or every day. Uh, and ice on the cake, if there is a discrepancy between the RxML file and the C file, uh, which was developed separately, we can detect this inconsistency and then we can raise an alarm to say that the spec is not aligned uh, with the code. So you, have, you, you will be aware that there, there is something to do uh, in the process to adjust even the spec or um, the um, source code file. So this is a good example of how we, how we, are, uh, we have automated uh, everything for uh, an industrial process. So I talked about techniques and key advantage. I would like now to zoom, and this is my last slide, to uh, activities in a software development process. So you understood that we detect earlier uh, subtle uh, bugs and vulnerabilities. In general, you need the executable file to, to do this activity, but with Trust in Soft Analyzer, you will do um, shift left, as we said in, in the market. So you are going to move ahead some uh, detection, many detections about runtime error of memory safety issue. Uh, it's already a key advantage uh, for, uh, for you. But we are also, Trusted Source Analyzer will contribute to uh, other activities. So in this wheel, you have safety activities and you have cyber security activities. We do not say that we are going to replace a test on uh, hardware with an executable file. We are going to spare time. We are going to save iterations uh, in the left branch of the vCycle. Uh, because we are uh, contributing to part of some activities. For example, as we are able to generate billions of billions of values, we can do fault injection uh, at the bottom of the V cycle. So we are going to spare you time um, in the left branch of the V cycle. And we can do as well interface testing, meaning that we are able to generate all possible return value for uh, a called uh, function, so an external library, for example, uh, you, you are using, but you do not have uh, the source code file. So we are able to say that this uh, call is generalized, and then you can assess if your software is robust enough to any failure of this interface. So we are not only we have not only uh, quite unique features, technical features in our uh, analyzer, we, the analyzer contributes to many activities and will reduce the effort for those activities. Uh, that's uh, really important uh, because as can remind, I remind you, we are sound and exhaustive and we use C and C++ source code files. So you don't need to build all the application to do this kind of verification very early in the process. Thank you.